In depletion mode, the mass capacitor accumulates ionic charge. But if we keep applying a positive potential, at some point at the surface of the oxide, we start to attract electrons. So this is the band diagram in depletion mode. We already agreed that the basic equations we're going to be using are VGB equals V oxide plus VS minus V flat band. And also the continuity of charge says that epsilon oxide, E oxide is equal to epsilon oxide, electric field in silicon, plus the accumulated charge at the surface of silicon. In depletion mode, the surface potential is still pretty small. It is actually much smaller than the oxide potential. And so we can ignore the um, silicon voltage and the silicon field uh, in relation to the oxide field. And we end up with two useful equations, which are that VGB is equal to V oxide minus V flat band. And also that epsilon oxide times the electric field on the oxide is equal to the accumulated charge in silicon. So in depletion mode, the accumulated charge in silicon is basically ionic charge. This is ionic charge from the depletion region. And if we look at the depletion region, uh, it has a certain depth. So if we look at it, it has a certain depth called XD, and it has a concentration of ions that is equal to Na. Because we are in p-type silicon, these ions are going to be negative, and therefore the accumulated charge is going to be uh, negative. And so, if we want to calculate the amount of charge accumulated in depletion region, it's going to be equal to sigma silicon is going to be equal to minus Q and A times XD, where XD is the depth of the depletion region. We also know that the electric field across the uh, oxide, uh, EC, E oxide, is going to be equal to minus V oxide by T oxide. T oxide is the thickness of the oxide, which in the band diagram is this dimension, and we are assuming a linear field through uh, the oxide. So we also know that the electric field in the oxide is equal to sigma silicon divided by epsilon oxide. We have already obtained an expression for the total accumulated ionic charge, which is minus Q and A X D over epsilon silicon. And this gives us a relationship between V oxide and the amount of charge accumulated in the depletion zone, which is Q and A over epsilon oxide times T oxide times XD. Now, what is XD? XD is the depth of the depletion region. And so it is very important to uh, obtain an expression for XD. Uh, the expression for XD, which is the uh, depth of the depletion zone, is actually the same as the expression of uh, the depth of the depletion zone in, 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 uh, in PN junctions. So we have uh, two epsilon silicon instead of two, uh, which is exactly the same as the PN junction, divided by QNA times V surface, which is the surface potential of silicon. This is exactly the same equation we used to obtain the uh, width of the depletion region in a one-sided p-n junction where one side is much more heavily doped than the other because here we have an interface between an oxide and the semiconductor and so the semiconductor is definitely much more heavily doped than the oxide and so we have an expression for xd and um, we can plug in this expression for xd into this equation and this gives us a relationship between v oxide and uh, and uh, Vs, which is the uh, surface potential of silicon. So uh, if we plug this in, we obviously have a nonlinear relationship between Vs and V oxide. And this relationship shows us that, um, that Vs is smaller than V oxide, which is something we could have already um, uh, guessed. And um, we can Simplify this so that we end up with the expression V oxide is equal to square root 2Q epsilon silicon and A V surface by C oxide. This still doesn't give us the expression of XD. It still doesn't give us uh, a value for XD, but the value of XD can be obtained by going back to the um, equation for VGB, which is equal to V oxide 
plus V surface minus V flat band. Now we have an expression for V oxide in terms of XD because we have an expression for V oxide uh, that relates it to XD in a linear fashion. We also have an expression for VS in terms of SD and this is going to be quadratic. And so if we substitute these two expressions and knowing the value of VGB, we can obtain the value of XD. And so what this tells us is that the more VGB we apply, the, um, the deeper the depletion region is going to be because XD increases as we apply more VGB. Now, at some point, what's going to happen is if you look at the depletion mode, the um, mid band gap is nearly the same as the Fermi level, which translates into depletion near the surface because we have a very low carrier concentration. But if we keep applying a positive potential to the gate terminal, we will keep pushing up the band diagram on the substrate side. And at some point, the Fermi level is going to cross the intrinsic Fermi level and it's going to go above it. When that happens, we start to accumulate electrons near the surface of the oxide. So we start to accumulate not only um, ionic charge, which is depletion charge, but we also start to accumulate a layer of electrons. The more we apply um, uh, VGB, the higher we raise the band diagram, and at some point we start to accumulate electrons because we change the nature of silicon near the surface into N-type. We call this mode inversion mode. And so now we have a few modes for the uh, MOS capacitor that we have to go through. We have thermal equilibrium, which means there's the, there's no uh, externally applied uh, potential. We have accumulation in which uh, the level of um, holes near the surface is higher than the equilibrium level. We have depletion mode in which we apply a positive potential to the gate, pushing away holes from the surface of the oxide and forming a depletion zone. And we have inversion mode in which the Fermi level rises above the mid gap near the surface, leading to the accumulation of electrons near the surface. We say it's inversion because we have inverted the type of silicon near the surface. Now, there is a little bit of a controversy about what is considered inversion. So as soon as the Fermi level rises above the mid gap, can we say that the silicon has been inverted near the surface? The answer is yes, of course. As soon as silicon turns into n-type near the surface, we say that we are in inversion. However, we distinguish between two types of inversion, what we call weak inversion and what we call strong inversion. In weak inversion, we have electron charge near the surface, but this electron charge is still pretty small. When we have strong inversion, we have a, an electron charge near the surface which is at least equal to the whole concentration in the bulk. So we say that we are in strong inversion when we are at least as much n-type as the bulk is p-type. So if at the surface we have an, an electron concentration that is equal to Na, we say that we have reached strong inversion. When people talk about MOSFETs or transistors being turned on, they talk about strong inversion. Weak inversion features in the calculation of subthreshold conduction, which is an extremely important method of leakage current. So we want to define strong inversion first, because this is what defines a transistor that is on. And strong inversion, as I said, is when the surface is as n-type as the bulk is. But there's a more fundamental difference between strong inversion and weak inversion than just the concentration of charge. The distinction happens to be with what happens to surface potential. So if we look at VGB, it's equal to V oxide plus V surface minus V flat band. Any increase in VGB is going to go to one of two things, either increasing V oxide or increasing the surface potential. In weak inversion, an increase in VGB is going to lead to an increase in both V oxide and V surface. In strong inversion, an increase in VGB is only going to lead to an increase in V oxide, meaning that surface potential will saturate at a certain level. Why? Why do we say that it saturates at this level? And what level of VGB do we consider to be the onset of strong inversion are the topics of the next video.